You know, I don't know about you, but God has a funny way of stopping me from doing what I want to do. Because, you see, I've given the Lord my life. Though at times I have taken back my choices and suffered the consequences of those choices I've made throughout the years of my life. But being a born again Christian for 35 plus years, which I can't even remember how many years now, it's pretty crazy, I guess, 37 or something. But irregardless of whether I took back my choices and made bad decisions or good decisions, God always tried to stop me from doing certain things that I was doing. He would give me a word or he would give me circumstances or make it very obvious what he wanted me to do. Sometimes speaking audibly even. So don't be surprised if God says, like he did to my sister one time. It's interesting, you know, people think that you have to be super spiritual in order to be hearing God's voice or that you have to be a super saint or that you have to be somehow in some religious you know, setting. My sister was driving down, and she's a Christian, a born again Christian, but she had been back soon, and she was driving down, I guess, to either make a drug run or to do something that, you know, was not a <laughs> Christian. And as she was driving down the hill, she heard an audible voice tell her, no, in a very loud way. She went back home. <laughs> to this day, she knows what voice that was, <laughs> and there is no doubt as to who spoke to her. So don't be surprised if God speaks to you in some way, so that at least you could say at the end of your days that you had heard God speak. Now, since then, I don't know if God spoke to her as directly or as odd, obviously, but she's saved, you know, and she's ministering to her family, you know, at the end of her life as much as more so than she did at the beginning of her life. So, praise the Lord. But God sometimes has to really work on me to stop me from doing things, even though he tells me to do something. Like, today I wanted to get so much done, I was like, oh, I can't wait to get up and get going and get on with it and record videos and then do these sites and do this and do that, because I do a lot, you know, in the ministry. I love it. You know, it's my life. It's like, <laughs> I could, I could go all night long, and I have, <laughs> but sometimes the Lord wants you to be still and to rest, or to stop, or to wait, and in those times he'll, like he did with one of these videos that I'm recording, he'll just let you record it and you go back to check it and it's not there, <laughs> and being a techie I know that I've clicked it on, so... <clears throat> There's no real solution for it except that God did it. And if you recognize at times in your day that you just think you forgot something or you just think you didn't do something, don't be surprised if in some little sneaky way God literally took it out of the way without you knowing that he was there today. Because I learned that God does move in our lives in those little things like I've I've said, Lord, I don't know where my keys are, you know, like most men or most women or most people. And I said, I can't find them and I don't have time. And I've looked around wherever the house may be, and as easily and as obvious as this book is, I passed it by, and then the next time I came back by, they were there. Now, for me, I acknowledge that it was an angel that God sent and put them there. And more often than not, I was able to later demonstrate and prove that it was. But if you don't start with acknowledging God in it, you'll never see that God is doing it around you, and He is the one whose hand or finger, as it were, of God, is writing on the wall something to you, or doing or arranging your circumstances to speak to you, to cause you to not do something, or to do something that He wants you to understand and to learn. So today, when you think it's like, you know, old age setting in or Alzheimer's or something and then suddenly it's there and you go, oh, well, I must have misplaced it and forgotten and now I find it. Don't be surprised if that's God working in your life. In waiting, I waited for the Lord. Waiting is much more difficult than walking. Walking requires patience and patience is a rare virtue. 
It is fine to know that God builds hedges around his people, when the hedge is looked at from the viewpoint of protection. But when the hedge is kept around one until it grows so high that he cannot see over the top, and wonders whether he is ever to get out of the little sphere of influence and service in which he is pent up, it is hard for him to sometimes understand why he may not have a larger environment and hard for him to brighten the corner where he is. But God has a purpose in all his holdups. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Read Psalms 37:23. On the margin of his Bible at this verse, George Mueller had a notation and the stops also. It is a sad mistake for men to break through God's hedges. It is a vital principle of guidance for a Christian never to move out of the place in which he is sure God has placed him until the pillar of God moves. When we learn to wait for our Lord's lead in everything, we shall know the strength that finds its climax in an even, steady walk, slowly going forward, irresistibly, irrefutably. Many of us are lacking in strength we so covet, but God gives full power for every task he appoints. Waiting, holding oneself true to his lead, this is the strength and the secret of strength and ability. And anything that falls out of line of his obedience is a waste of time and strength. Watch for his leading. Must life be a failure of one compelled to stand still in enforced inaction? and see the great throbbing tides of life go by? No, victory is then to be gotten by standing still, by quiet waiting. Recognize when the Lord would have you be still. It is a thousand times harder to do this than it is, than it was in the active days to rush on in the columns of stirring life or great anxious and anxiety in the rat race of running today. It requires a grander heroism to stand, to wait, and not lose heart, and not lose hope, and to submit to the will of God, and to give up work and honors to others, to be the quiet, confident, rejoicing, while the happy and busy multitude go on their way. It is the grandest life that having done all, to stand. Today, if you are in that place, which obviously if you're watching and you're hearing, you are. It's for you. Stop what you're doing. Quit being so going and be still. Because the place you are in the strength of the Lord is a pillar in the temple of his God. And God has made you solemn, standing, silent, and strong in the Lord to be that strength that when a person needs to look, they can see that you're still there and you still care. And you don't have to say a word, you don't have to do a thing, but to stand and be still and then see the salvation that God will bring.